Well, today, if you couldn't tell from the theme of the skit, today we're going to talk about prayer. And I wanted to tell you guys about a prayer in my life that God answered pretty recently. I want to tell you about an answered prayer that I have. Um, when we moved to Phoenix, when we got here, started our uh, vicarage year, we moved into the apartments behind the church over there. And um, I don't know if you've ever been over there, but it's, it's like a community. There's a pool in the middle. There's, there's like 24 or 25 of these apartments. So we move in, and we move into this like mini little neighborhood. And my wife Erin and I were trying to figure out how do we... How do we be a blessing to this group of people? How do we have an impact? How do we have some kind of influence on the neighborhood more than just living there for a year and then leaving? What kind of, how do we leave a mark on them? How do we just, you know, take some time and, and love on them? And so we had some ideas and we were, we were brainstorming about it. And I, I prayed about it. And I just prayed that God would, would give us some kind of way in uh, with them, some kind of influence, some kind of impact. And uh, a couple weeks ago, in, the, in the, the span of three days, three different days, I was sitting on my porch all three days, you know, all three days working on a sermon, and three different ones of my neighbors in three days uh, approached me on the patio and sat down and just started, like, pouring out their life to me. Um, three different people in three different circumstances, all in different places in their lives, all in different places in their walks with God. Um, they just sat down and they wanted to talk. They wanted to talk about life. They wanted to talk about, you know, they said, what are you doing? I said, writing a sermon. They said, oh, I got to talk to you about God. And they just wanted to, like, let me know how things were going. They wanted to ask me questions about, you know, the rapture and, and this and that. And they said all these questions. And, and, but in the course of three days, I was able to have probably the most important kind of conversation I ever really have with anybody with three different people I bring it up, and it was it was pretty amazing. Some of the uh, two of those conversations went really, really well. One of them was okay, but it started in a different place. But maybe you have this this kind of awareness. Maybe you have this kind of feeling, the same that I do. But when God answers one of my prayers, like when I I pray for something, and and then God just like answers it, I get this like whoa feeling, you know, like, like, whoa, God listened to me, you know, like, whoa, whoa. God answered me, <laughs> like me, this little tiny dude <laughs> out of a billion dudes and dudettes on a tiny little rock <laughs> that he made that must just be like a, a tiny little pebble to him. And he, he knows me, and he loves me. And I'm not even one of the best dudes. I'm like, I'm, I'm not even that good of a dude. I, I mess up, and I fail him all the time. And he still knows me, and he still loves me, and he cares so much about me that he even cares about the, the little prayers that I send up to him, the little prayers, the, the stuff that I care about, the stuff that I'm concerned about, the stuff that I want to talk about. And I bring before the God of the universe who dwells in unapproachable light, and he hears me. And then he answers me. <laughs> and it just makes me think like, wow. And it makes me, it reminds me of when I was a kid. It reminds me of Sunday school, right? Where being a kid, you just thought, God is so big. What are, what are some of your favorite Sunday school stories? What are some of the things that you learned, uh, like stories you learned in Sunday school? Do you have any favorite Sunday school Bible stories? Noah's Ark. That's a great, that's a great one. Um, Noah's Ark and Samson. Samson. That's a great one. Job. Job. Good Samaritan. That's a good one. What about uh, Elijah and the prophets of Baal where he, he prays and it rains down fire? And you guys remember that one? I, I think about these, I think about these stories. And doesn't it, doesn't it just leave you thinking, my God can do anything? You know? Like, when you try and remember back to being that small, you just think, man, God is so big and God can do anything. 
And we used to ask him for stuff. We used to, a God that's that big and a God that can do anything he wants, we used to ask him for stuff all the time because we knew when we were little, we knew in Sunday school two things. One, God loves us, right? We know that God loves us. And, and the second thing is God can do anything. We know that God can do anything. So we used to ask him for stuff all the time, even little stuff. Just we used to ask him all this stuff. And my question my question for this evening is, is that still how we are? Is that still how we are? Is that, the, is that still the, the same way we think about God and the same way we approach him and the same way we ask him for stuff? I mean, what, what happened between then and now? What happened between when we were little and when we were in Sunday school and now? Why, why don't we... Why does it seem like, at least, that we don't go to God with everything in just this, wow, this God of the universe actually cares about this thing? And I, I, think, I think the reason, uh, at least for most of us, the reason why we don't, we don't pray maybe like we used to when we were little, I think the reason is our wrong thought for tonight. A wrong thought for tonight, and we're all, at some point, we're all guilty of it. We all, we all think it or have thought it, is prayer doesn't work. Or at least, prayer doesn't always work. We think this or we have thought it because there's been a time in each of our lives where we didn't get what we wanted. We didn't get what we asked for. Something that we wanted to happen didn't happen. <clears throat> or something that we didn't want to happen did happen. And we remember all the passages in the Bible where it says, ask God for, for whatever and it will be given to you. Or, or seek and you will find it. Or knock and the door will be open to you. Or God will give you all of your needs and we think about these things, and then, and then we compare that. We look at what happened, and we think, man, I prayed, and it didn't work. We think that prayer doesn't work, or at the very least, we think or have thought prayer doesn't always work. I'd like you to turn to the person next to you and poke them. That's just... Uh, that's a convenient way for me to bring up Facebook. <laughs> That's all that was, is a, a helpful transition. I want you to think about this. What if you stopped using Facebook because there was one time where you tried to poke someone and it wouldn't let you? Like, you, you, you click the poke button and the page wouldn't load. The window wouldn't change. It wouldn't show that you poked somebody. And so you tried. You really wanted to poke somebody, but you couldn't poke them. Right? What if you deactivated your account and said, nah, Facebook doesn't really work? Because that's what Facebook is, right? It's just a digital way to poke people. Well, <laughs> they Facebook stop poking each other. <laughs> Facebook... It's not just a way to poke people. It's a way to be connected with your friends on the internet, right? It's a way to hang out online. It's a way to, it's a way to um, share with each other online. It's not about poking people. It's, that's one thing that you can do, right? I don't even know if you can still poke people because they changed Facebook, so I don't know if there's still a way to poke them. But, but, the, but the whole point is that the point isn't about poking people. The point of Facebook is connecting and sharing with your friends, right? What if I told you that the point of prayer is not asking for stuff and getting it? What if I told you the point of prayer is not asking for stuff and getting it? That's something that definitely happens. But it's not the point. The point of prayer is connecting and sharing with God. It's a chance to spend one-on-one -on -one time with this God of the universe 
who dwells in unapproachable light. If I were to ask you, who would you, who would you do anything to have lunch with? Who's one person that you would do anything to be able to hang out with or have lunch with? President Obama? Oh, a different president? <laughs> Arizona's funny. You know I'm from Chicago, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm praying for you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Just like I pray for people from Milwaukee. Um, <laughs> Pastor Jeff. No. Um, <laughs> all right, so who would you do anything to hang out with? Who would you do anything to have lunch with? The president. Um, I like a guy named Damian Walters. I show his videos at camp sometimes. He's just like really flippy guy. He does like crazy parkour stuff. Uh, I'd, I'd like to have lunch with him and just ask him how he survived 10 years. Yeah. Daniel Tosh. Daniel Tosh. I, that'd be funny. That'd be kind of funny. I don't know if I can make it all the way through lunch with him, but I'd laugh maybe. Maybe. Who else? Yeah. Schwarzenegger. That'd be a cool lunch. Would you spend the whole time trying to talk like him? I would. I would. All right. Well, not to, not to bring it down too many notches, but would you, jump, would you jump at the chance to spend your lunch break praying? Yes. Very good. It's a little bit different, though, right? I mean, do you have that same kind of excitement to spend your lunch period with God as you would with maybe somebody else you'd be excited to? I think we miss the point of prayer sometimes. You know, bad things, bad things happen in our lives and we go to God and we ask him to fix it or we ask him to change it. And then sometimes things don't change. Raise your hand if you've ever been there. Yeah, things don't change. But then sometimes we conclude that that means that prayer didn't work. And then we're less and less likely to pray. Because we think it doesn't work. But we miss the point of prayer. And since we miss the point of prayer when we think it didn't work, then we don't pray. And then what prayer is actually supposed to do doesn't happen either. See, God, God didn't invent prayer as a way to find out about your life and what needs fixing and changing. God already knows about your life. He already knows what needs fixing and what needs changing, and he's willing and able to do it even before you ask, whether or not you ask, even beyond all that you can ask or think. That's not why he made prayer. He made prayer as a way for us to spend time with him, to interact with him, to connect with him, so that he can change us and fix us to change how we view the people and the stuff that's around us, to fix how we view and how we feel about the situations and circumstances that we think aren't the way that they should be. He made prayer to change our perception of it and to change we, the way that we view it. This is, this is just a, a plain fact. So listen to this one. Prayer doesn't always change your circumstance or your situation. But prayer always changes you. Think about that for a second. Prayer works. It does. Because the point of prayer is to change you. Through the time spent in connection and relationship with God, no one leaves the presence of God the same way that they came. It's like David, David writes in the Psalms, in Psalm 27, verse 4. He says, One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek. What's the one thing that you ask for? Don't say it out loud, but think, think to yourself. What's the one thing that you keep praying about? If I, were to look, if I were to look at your prayers for the last few weeks, what would I see? Would I see anything? But... but if, if I did, what would I see? What would I see that you keep asking God for? Listen for a moment to what David asked for. He says, one thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek. 
that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. David's saying, Lord, I just need to be with you and everything's going to be okay. He's saying, just let me just be close to him. Let me just be close to him. So am I saying, am I saying don't ask God for stuff? Am I saying don't go to him with your problems and don't talk to him about the stuff that's worrying you and weighing you down? Actually, I'm actually saying the exact opposite of that. I'm saying actually talk to him about that stuff. Actually go to him and spend time with him talking about it because that's exactly what he wants. The issue, the confusion for us is that sometimes we don't think about the fact that he wants to connect with you. He wants to have a relationship with you, and he cares so much about you and what you're going through that he actually wants you to, to talk to him about it. See, God's not, God's not a vending machine. He's not a, a cosmic butler that comes when you ring a bell, cleans it up or fixes it, and then leaves. It's not like that. He actually cares about you. He wants to know you. He wants to talk with you. He wants to share with you and teach you and change you. And the interaction, the connection, it will change you. Sometimes your life will be different. And sometimes the, the situation, the circumstance, it actually will turn around. It will change. And sometimes it won't. But that's not the point. That's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that the way that you view it, the way that you feel about it, will have changed. What does that mean? The truth, I think the truth is that sometimes what we think we need is a little bit different than what we really do need. You know? The point of our lives, the reason that we're still here on earth. Instead of just going to heaven the moment you get baptized or the moment that you believe in Jesus, the reason we're still around is that we are God's way of loving the people around us. We're, we're, he, we're how he loves them. Our two jobs, as, as simple as they are, to just love God with all that we have in us and take care of the people that he's placed around us as best we can. Sometimes there's stuff that we think that we need in order to do our two jobs. This is, this is kind of, I, I think I need an iPhone to do ministry better. You know, I can check my emails faster and get back to people. I can always be on Facebook and connect to the kids a little bit easier. I can have Siri remind me of my appointments, and that's very helpful. Whatever it is. And I'll tell you the truth, it makes a whole lot of things a whole lot easier. But it also makes some things harder. Now that I've got this in my pocket, in the middle of a conversation, or when I'm just hanging out with my friends, I'm tempted to like, stop having the conversation, stop participating in what's going on, and play draw something with a friend from back home. It's good and it's bad. Because it, it, it connects me to people that are far away. But it also distracts me from people that are right in front of me. So what's the point? The point is, do, do I need this to do ministry? No. No, Pastor Jeff does just fine with his brick phone from the 90s. He got it from Zach Morris. That's a Saved by the Bell joke. That, it scares me that you have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> Saved, by the, Saved by the Bell was big at one point in life. The point is, there's things that we think that we need. And the Bible says God will give us all of our needs. And so when we don't get the things that we think that we need, we think that prayer is broken. You say, I, I need more money, God. Or, he dumped me. I don't know what I'm going to do. I need him in my life, God. Or I'm unemployed. 
I need this job, God, in order to feed my family. Probably the hardest one. I need this person to recover. To get healthy again. I need this person to survive this illness. Or you know what, God? It's over. I'm done. I cannot imagine my life without this person. I cannot imagine being able to go on without them. Some of you have been there. Some of you, I know for a fact, are right there right now. I've been, I've been there many times. I've prayed for people and they've died anyway. I've been through it and I can tell you from experience and the truth is, so can many of the people here. Ask your parents or ask your friends. Being with God in that situation, in prayer, pouring my heart out to him and just crying and, and yelling and spending all those hours in prayer and connecting with him about it and sharing with him about it and hearing his word and learning from him. You go, okay, you know what? Death isn't the end. It's going to be okay. It, it hurts now and it's probably going to hurt for a really long time, but the truth is it's not forever. We're going to be together again. And so prayer worked. Not because, not because the situation changed, because it didn't, but because you changed. He changed me and he changed you through the time spent with him. And now you actually can go on, even though you didn't think it was possible. You actually can keep on doing your two jobs while you're here. Loving him and loving others. And the truth is, the weird thing is, now you're actually a little bit better at it than you were before. You actually love him more after he holds you up and carries you through that grief and that pain and that anger. And sure, you're still sad and you're probably going to be sad for a long time. But now there's peace too. And you actually love other people more now too because you're you're even more aware of the fact that that they're only on loan to you from God for a little bit of time and now you'll give up anything just to love on them while you got them and to take care of them as best you can while you have the chance Paul says my God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory God gives you what you need to do your jobs. The truth is that what you need and what I need is more of Him. Prayer works because in prayer, God gives Himself to you completely. He says, here I am. Let's sit down and talk this out. Let's sit down and you just... You just pour it all out and I'll just listen and then we'll work it out. We'll work it through and we'll, we'll be able to get through it because I'm with you. And when it's all over, you know, the situation might be the same, but you're going to be different. Because that's what this whole prayer thing is about. And prayer works. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we, we just thank you that you're here with us in this place, and we thank you for your love in our lives. Lord, we ask for courage to live the life that you've called us to boldly, and we ask for the creativity to, to keep coming up with new ways to express our love to you, and to share the love you've given to us with those you've placed around us. Lord, we thank you for the gift of prayer where you offer yourself to us. And Lord, while we recognize that that sharing this time with you doesn't always 
change the circumstances and the situations in our lives, the time spent with you always changes us more and more, little by little, day by day, from the inside out, to the people that you've created us to be. In Jesus' name.